Hey guys, Ben here. Welcome back to another live stream. Today, this is the DC TV show episode 130. It is just me today. Uh, Andy might be popping in later. I'm going to turn on some more lights, so I apologize for that in just a second. Um, but yeah, we're going to be streaming. Um, this is like an hour later than normal, but we've got some topics to talk about. I don't have like a huge amount of topics to actually talk about in today's live stream, but that's where you guys come in. I want to interact with you guys. I want to chat. I want to respond to what you're saying. So please be sure to send in, you know, any questions you have, any kind of theories that you want me to talk about and any reactions in regards to, you know, what I'm talking about in today's live stream. Plus also, please be sure to subs Ugh. too many S's. Please be sure to support the stream by sending in super chats throughout the live stream. And of course, your questions will be answered right away as soon as you guys send that in. And yeah, this week, um, you know, there hasn't been like too much news. And, you know, I think none of it is like super, super interesting apart from obviously Joker 2. Like that is the most interesting thing that we've got going on right now. And so... Yeah, I don't know how much how many of you guys have have seen the trailer, but it's definitely something that, you know, I think it's very interesting. Like I'm really looking forward to that film. So I wanted to discuss it in today's live stream. Um, so yeah, just making a few changes and I'm just gonna put the light on and so you know we can properly uh live stream. So yeah. Um just me today, as I said, you know, um it was quite late that I decided to do it today. Like I only got back from London like fairly recently. Um, so yeah, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it or not. But yeah, just going to turn the light on. Be one sec, guys. Greg, welcome to the live stream. Nice to have you here. And to everyone else that is here, please be sure, uh, you know, to interact in the chat. So yeah, we, we can get a conversation going. Um, how are you doing, Craig, on this fine day? Um, what did you think of the Joker trailer? Um, did you find it interesting? Like, are you really looking forward to it? I feel like, you know, let's go into Joker now. Like, I think, um, in my opinion, like, I loved the first film, but I have been very skeptical about, you know, the idea of this being, you know, like a, like a sequel, but also like, you know, kind of a little bit unnecessary, um, in terms of like, okay, Joker was a great standalone film, like, did it actually need a sequel? And so I think we've, you know, have talked about that before. Um, but I think the main question mark is, you know, the whole musical aspect of it. So, and I think in the trailer, it doesn't give you as much as it's going to be. Like, it's definitely going to have musical songs. It teases it in the trailer, which I think is a good way to go about it. However, I think later they should probably go more into the songs um, because that is going to be a big chunk of that film. So, it's definitely going to um, take up a big deal of time. Uh, Craig says, I'm a bit mixed. I actually never saw the first Joker movie, if you can believe it. No, I can't believe that. That's crazy. Um, you should you should watch it. He says, it just all looks so serious. I don't know. Not everything needs a sequel for sure. Yeah, I agree, Craig. Like, um, not everything needs a sequel. I don't particularly think even the Batman needs a sequel. But, of course, I'm looking forward to that. Um, and for Joker, I loved the first film. I thought the first film was like really good. I was very, very impressed with what Tom Phillips did. Yeah, it's dark. Yeah, it's very serious, but I think it's dark and serious in like a cool, like actually good and like entertaining way. So yeah, I'm a big fan of the first film. So looking forward to what he has to do 
has to offer in in you know this this sequel um so yeah um if any of you guys have any other opinions on joker please be sure to let me know in the chat and uh yeah send in any super chats if you want to support the stream as we go along um i think for me i just want stories with characters i haven't seen before if possible fair enough uh, but I will say that at least with Joker as a character, almost every actor has played the role, has been different, and Joaquin Phoenix is definitely different. Yeah, that's true. Um, so I guess you were kind of into Blue Beetle and what they did there, because uh, we've only seen him in animation as far as I'm aware. And then I guess you're probably looking forward to maybe Booster Gold, who's like less well-known. Yes, he appeared in Legends and Smallville, but... Yeah, uh, Craig says, love Blue Beetle, favorite DC movie in years. Fair enough, Craig. <laughs> yeah, Blue Beetle was pretty good, in my opinion. Um, he did appear in an episode of Smallville, but he was like a blue Iron Man. Yeah, it's like, I think you can, um, I think you can excuse, like, <laughs> when a character shows up just briefly in live action, like, he kind of didn't, like, he showed up for a minute, but, you know, that's like, you know, it's not a whole film. It's not a whole TV show about it. So, yeah, Blue Beetle was good. Uh, I know Andy is a big fan of Blue Beetle. So, you know, that's um, a film that we've talked about a lot on this channel. And so, yeah. Um, mm, yeah, so Jaime Reyes did appear. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... I guess just like in regards to Joker, yeah, <clears throat> my reaction to the trailer is I've watched it quite a lot now. Like, I really did like what we got in that trailer. Like, it's got me hyped up. And, you know, in a week where we haven't had too much DC news, you know, it's definitely got me very, very excited for, like, what's to come in terms of the film side because this is, like, one of the final projects before obviously the DCU takes over and it's something different. It's, you know, something we've seen before, but at the same time, it's, um, you know, it's something familiar, but yet different because it's going to be a musical. It's going to be not exactly what you expect from a sequel to a very serious Joker film. Yes. The sequel is going to be serious too, but, it's probably going to be like all in the head of Joker and just like, you know, playing out in that way. So yeah, let me know. What do you guys think about this? Uh, really looking forward to it. You know, there is a lot to offer when it comes to these Elseworld films. I'm a big fan of Elseworld films. So hopefully we get more in the future. Um, let's see. Um, okay, let's chat a little bit about um, CinemaCon because Warner Brothers did a panel and at this panel they showcased a couple of new looks at, um, you know, certain projects. I'm just going to pull it up on the screen to have a little chat about it. Um, so, yeah, this is a new... Um, this is a new film that's coming out, Super Slash Man, uh, the Christopher Reeve story, which is going to be the first film actually under the DCU label. So it's going to be something new, something different for DC. And this is a documentary on Christopher Reeve. And I think it's definitely going to be, you know, something like an actual valuable project. It doesn't feel like it's just there for the sake of it. It feels like okay, they've gone for this and, you know, they need different projects to kind of kickstart the DCU properly. And I guess this has just been in the pipeline for a while and they've probably just been working on it in the background. And now it's supposedly getting ready to be released and it's going to release apparently in September. They haven't given us like a specific date for exactly in September when it's going to happen. But yeah, I think it sounds like an interesting project. Let me know what do you guys think about it. Let me know in the chat. Um, I am a Christopher Reeve fan. I like what he did. And obviously, he's got a big legacy to fulfill. 
And now with this new film called Superman, obviously you have to live up to that title. You have to live up to what Christopher Reeve did as Superman. So that's something that's obviously big right now. And so I think it's coming at a good time releasing the documentary before the new Superman comes out, because I guess, you know, this is going to be like a leap back into the past and see what, um, you know, uh, see what, sorry, I don't know where I'm clicking, uh, see, see what, you know, went through what he went through in his life. Yeah, I'm not making much sense, but um, they probably will run a trailer for Superman 2025 with this film. That's very true. I didn't actually think about that. Like, yeah, I think if they find a good spot, this would be a perfect spot. Um, because if, you know, if... Um, I really can't speak today, guys. I'm really sorry. But uh, if, if this Super Slash Man film, you know, comes out and it's, you know... Wait, if it comes out in se September and then Superman is coming out in the summer... I mean, that's a good time to release a teaser. And yeah, that's a long time away from now, like September. But you have to realize they still have a lot of shooting left. Like the shooting isn't nearly done. It's at, I guess, a decent stage for now. But yeah, I mean, September would be a nice time. Um, I don't know if, you know, that would be like a longer trailer. Like maybe he does like a suit reveal like the Batman did at DC Fandom. Um, could it be like that? I don't know. Let me know. Uh, what do you guys think? But yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Let's see what Craig has said. Love the new S. Yeah. Um, I really like the new S. What they showed at the panel was just in the background behind Peter Safran. Um, so yeah, that was pretty exciting. Um, Craig also says, I think you just said is relevant also because it was in development even before DC and WB signed on. So it is coming from the heart. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like this is a project that definitely is just an intriguing story for any DC, any Superman fan. And I think it just comes at like an actual good time, you know, to, to, be a Superman fan, to be excited for the new projects. Like, with that, obviously, you have a lot to look forward to because this is going to be delving into the past. And, yeah, I think, you know, Christopher Reeve's story is very interesting. We, we've we heard echoes of it. We've heard bits and pieces. But, you know, it'll be nice to actually go back and look properly, like, in the inside look um into his life i guess uh craig says it didn't hit me before that we're approaching 20 year anniversary from Reese passing yeah uh it's been a good while now like yeah it's it's definitely come and gone very fast obviously <laughs> time goes fast um and um yeah same with like heath leisure if you think about it like, I don't know when when he he died, but that was obviously a big thing back at the time uh, when, you know, Dark Knight was coming out. Like, Heath Ledger was 2008, so that's already 15 years ago. That's, like, five years, uh, five years after Christopher Reeves. So, yeah, they're two, like, pretty significant um, DC losses. And so, yeah, you know... It's, it's pretty tragic, but uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing Super Slash Man, the Christopher Reeve story, to get a proper insight into his life. I don't know if it's going to specifically go into, you know, um, I don't know if it's specifically going to, you know, delve into those final days. Is it going to delve into um, his whole life or is it mainly going to be like after the accident and what caused him to be paralyzed? I guess that's probably where they're going with this. Um, Craig says, I told the Smallville producers that repass before they saw it on the news. Well, wow, that's kind of crazy that you <laughs> you said that. I guess you were in, it, in an interview with the Smallville producers back then. Um, 
if I check Christopher Reeve, Christopher Reeve, when was it? <laughs> Pre-Twitter era, yeah, for sure. 2004, 10th of October, 2004. So, yeah, um, this year on October 10th, it will be 20 years since Christopher Reeve um, obviously died, and that's been a while. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely pre-Twitter era, Craig, that's for sure. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of crazy. Like, you just told the Smallville producers – Oh, this happened. You know, Christopher Reeve is gone. Yeah, that was a long, long time ago. So, yeah. Um, okay. Now, let's move on from that. Let's talk about the logo a bit because we didn't really get to discuss it too much yet. Um, I also got in trouble with WB Publicity for getting quotes from the cast about Reeves passing directly. Oh, wow. So I guess they, at the time, you know, the way that they went about it, I guess they, you know, didn't want to like fully. I, I mean, I don't know what their reasons are, but that's interesting, Craig. Yeah. Um, what's the next show after Superman Lois? Next show for DC is Creature Commandos later this year that's an animated dc show but i would guess um i would guess uh after that the next live action dc show obviously is the penguin but penguin might even come out before superman lois um so i guess after superman lois it would probably be mm, are we thinking uh are we thinking booster gold is like the next big dcu show or are we thinking it's um, Lanterns? Like, I feel like Lanterns should take priority, even though I'm very excited for Boost the Gold. Um, let me know, what do you guys think in the chat? And of course, please be sure to send in any Super Chats to support the stream. I would really appreciate that. Um, as we go along this live stream, yeah, Craig's also excited for Boost the Gold. I'm definitely super excited for Boost the Gold myself. Um, definitely an underrated character, not DC directly, but Dead Boy Detectives based on DC slash Vertigo is out in two weeks and Sandman season two should be coming. Yeah, actually, I totally forgot about that. I saw the trailer the other day. Dead Boy Detectives looks pretty good. Uh, Greg Belanti is involved. She Sarah Schechter from Supergirl is also involved. And I believe the Arrow showrunner and co-showrunner Beth Schwartz is actually one of the co-showrunners of the show. So it's definitely Arrowverse related um, in terms of the people working on it. So, you know, I'm very interested to see how that actually goes. I think it's definitely gone under the radar. A lot of people that I've talked to, um, um, a lot of people that I talked to haven't heard of it. And I don't think Netflix has done a very good job promoting it, in my personal opinion, because I feel like it should be more out there like they should market it as from the arrowverse producers or from you know the world of the sandman like i've had to explain it so i've had to explain that connection and people are like what is linked to sandman what um because they don't necessarily know the dc and vertigo comic so they're like okay this project's coming out from what greg Berlanti and it's, you know, with Beth Schwartz as a showrunner, like, they haven't really marked it very well, in my opinion. Like, it's very unknown. Craig agrees. It's, uh, yeah, they have not. They've not marked it well. Like, I don't know many DC fans, and I talk to a lot of big DC fans, like myself, and they don't really, they haven't heard much. Um, that's great to see that you uh, have interviewed Beth Schwartz. That's obviously you know really cool like yeah shout out best schwartz uh you've seen all eight episodes it's good mm, interesting um i should definitely try and watch the episodes um i guess i'll reach out to netflix today or tomorrow that's a good idea because it would be great to get a head start on that before it comes out um it's from the Arrowverse producers but also a supernatural writer slash producer so it should appeal to that audience too yeah, that actually makes sense, that supernatural connection. Um, and also, Beth Schwartz, the Arrowverse 
uh, the Arrow showrunner towards the end of the show. So, yeah, I mean, everything is kind of pointing towards this show actually being pretty good. Um, we'll see what it is like. I don't know how similar it is to Sandman. I like Sandman when it came out. Um, and we'll see what Greg Belanti and everyone has got cooking in this new Netflix DC show. Um, Matthew Tan says, is there anybody that covers the Marvel universe like you do for DC? Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of people. Um, I don't know specific channels. I'm not like super up to date with Marvel. Uh, when will the Smallville come out? Is it on the CW? Definitely not on the CW. Um, I think it's a matter of time. It's not going to be rushed, but more likely than not, it will be a animated sequel. Apparently they've got a whole kind of premise ready they are ready to pitch it when they want to but apparently according to M michael rosenbaum t now is like not the right time for them but they will eventually pitch it so it's pretty concrete because you know they've got the showrunners back in them they've got the rest of the cast who are ready to return so at some point i'm sure we're going to get that smallville animated sequel i know craig's going to be super excited about that matthew are you excited about that Oh, Craig says, I am still unfortunately skeptical that a small world sequel will ever happen just because of how Warner Brothers Discovery is. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that is the one doubt. It's like, would Warner Brothers accept it? Um, but I just feel like, how can you take, how can you not like accept that this could be a good project? Like, they don't have to do tons of episodes. Like, they can make it a five to eight episode run. And yes, Warner Brothers is obviously very stingy about what it releases. It's stingy about his animated projects. As you said, Coyote versus Acme, or however you say that, uh, that's not coming out. Uh, I know they scrapped this uh, Scooby-Doo animation a while ago. So yeah, it's, it's not looking like too much in terms of like, positivity but from the warner brothers side i'm talking about but from the fan side and we're obviously excited but also the fact that michael rosenbaum is talking about it and saying you know they got something concrete going on there you know that is is exciting by itself thank you guys i really appreciate it thanks matthew thanks craig i appreciate it um yeah it's it's great you know i hope we can grow the live streams like you know it's great with other guests because I can just bounce back and forth. But yeah, there's not too much, uh, you know, topics to talk about today. So, you know, it's good to bounce back and forth with you guys. Um, so yeah, keep commenting, keep sending in, you know, your questions. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, um, the Superman logo on the back of the screen behind Peter Saffron at the event. Yeah, that was like, that was pretty cool. Um, I'll try and grab it and put it on the screen because i've got a screenshot here or a photo that someone took at cinemacon cinemacon a lot of people i know are at the event it's in las vegas warner brothers did a big panel as i said super slash man the christopher reeve documentary was teased there it's coming out in september and then now with this obviously he also teased superman James Gunn was shooting at Atlanta at the time, so he couldn't appear. But Peter Sefran, the producer, who I've seen actually many times, like he comes to all of the UK premieres, which I think is pretty cool. Saw him last at Aquaman. And I saw him for the first time like ages ago. I don't remember, like Shazam or something. Um, but anyway, yeah, this is the uh, first proper good look at the Superman logo in you know, 2D form. Now, yeah, of course, we've seen the emblem on the actual suit. And that's, you know, what is most important? Does that look good? It's not this 2D um, logo that you're going to see on posters and stuff. Um, but I think, you know, it looks good. It's pretty basic. It's not your traditional Superman Lego logo. It's more, you know, Kingdom Come inspired, which is fair enough. Like, I think Kingdom Come is interesting don't know how far they're going to go with kingdom come story i feel like they're just going to take the logo and run away and do like their own story because you know there's been lots of talk of them doing you know you know this actual film not being 
strictly based on like one or two comics it's like more of just inspired by a bunch of different uh comics and then you know he's just come together that being james gunn and he's been like okay let's make this superman film and let's make it like i want to make it rather than you know being a specific comic book adaptation because there is you know especially if it's like a really good comic book adaptation like kingdom come there is actually a lot of pressure to make it work like unbeknownst to a lot of people flashpoint is a huge comic book and that's a huge story to tell for the first flash film i'm not surprised it didn't work to be honest like it's tough to go for those big well-known comic book stories and actually hit the ground running and like make it work really well i think you know something like the batman is the best example where it's heavily inspired by you know long halloween and some other comics like batman year one and year two and stuff but um yeah you can take inspiration but like create your own story that's what the batman did and that's what apparently james gunn is doing with superman but yeah the logo looks great what do you guys think of it um it's pretty basic but yeah i mean it's just what we've been seeing for a while it's what we've seen on the suit um obviously on the suit it just looks better because it's like more defined and you've got the, all the textures and also the suit is not 2d like it's 3d so it just goes around his chest um rather than just on the screen like that but yeah craig loves the logo i love the logo man on the moon says they should end the show like justice league dark apocalypse war everything goes to hell what show are we talking about here are we talking about superman lois or are we talking about something else? Matthew Tan says, bring back Henry Cavill. Loved him as Superman. Yeah, Henry was good. I was very excited to see a potential Black Adam Superman film. But obviously, they kind of backtracked on that after Black Adam came out. Uh, which, you know, is funny retrospectively looking back here. Because Black Adam didn't do bad compared to the other films. Um, because there were so many flops this year from DC. Uh, last year, sorry, The Flash. No offense. Love Blue Beetle. And I love Shazam. I loved The Flash for the most part. Uh, but the films didn't perform well at the box office. Only Black Adam the previous year did. And uh, Aquaman did pretty decent as well. So, um, yeah. They were definitely banking on Black Adam doing like even better, being like super, super popular because of The Rock. And, you know, bringing back Henry, Cav Henry Cavill was, you know, a huge thing that they were trying to set up because they wanted to do a Black Adam sequel. And to be honest, I don't think it's going to happen, which is a big shame. Uh, Man on the Moon says, yes, um, Superman Lois. So in regards to their first question, uh, they should end the show just like Justice League Dark Apocalypse War everything goes to hell yeah i mean that would be a pretty dark way to end superman lois i don't think they would actually go for that just because <clears throat> i think they would want to end it on you know kind of hopeful note because that's just kind of what superman lois is yeah it gets dark at times but it's not like an extremely dark show um you know when you think about it so i think that would be a little bit maybe too far it would probably anger some fans who are wanting a happy ending so yeah not sure about that uh, sorry guys um matthew says i wish they brought back the super friends um the original cartoon back on tv yeah that obviously was way back in the day um it's definitely you know it's a good project uh, Man of the Moon says uh, they shouldn't announce anything at the next cinema con. They should either do a comic con or a new DC fandom. I completely agree with you there. Uh, talk about Superman while also talking about Creature Commandos, the whole DC lineup. Yeah, I completely agree. I feel like doing two events with the same info would make it boring. Yeah, so if you're revealing stuff now, if you're talking about it at cinema con, obviously they have to do it really. Because if you guys didn't know, CinemaCon is for, you know, like cinema um, operators and like the press to get an insight, to get a glimpse into what's going to be releasing in the next like year or so. Um, 
hey fabian welcome to the live stream good to have you here um but yeah also remember sending any final super chats in this live stream because uh we're going to be ending the stream pretty soon we've got like one more topic just want to talk a little bit superman lois so if you guys have any superman lois related questions or um things you want to send in now's the time to do it but yeah i think they should do a new D dc fandom in my opinion i think they should do a live dc fandom like an actual comic con event like why not disney does you know their thing um star wars does star wars celebration why can't we have a dc celebration like seriously i'm i'm being serious like that would be huge dc fandom live or just call it dc celebration like star wars celebration like you would get dc fans from all over the world going there imagine if you could get like actors to come from past shows and also teasing new projects like that would be insane i would so go to that if they were to do that um so i completely agree with you man on the moon um when comes the trailer of superman lois um for season four if it's releasing fall which is probably like october time i'm gonna say um august probably earliest i don't think they're gonna go to comic con so don't expect that like they used to do um but i would probably say september is your best bet for a proper good promo they might do a couple of teasers in august in the summer uh, but yeah i don't think we should expect a trailer until really september which i know is a long time we're in april um so we have to go through the whole summer before we really see anything which is a shame but at least you know there's kind of prolonging the experience of superman lois um man on the moon says if they do superman at comic at cinema con they should do reveal having to do with the movie like movie popcorn buckets for the movie reveal and a screening yeah so i mean i don't know if you mean comic con there but yeah comic con would be great for superman i think dc should be there i think dc should be doing a panel there um craig says i think they're waiting to see how superman 2025 does before doing another dc event yeah that's fair enough like i just think it would be such a good opportunity to do a you know comic con style event where dc and warner bros is like in full control because i feel like that's the thing they haven't want wanted in a while since the pandemic uh, to kind of relinquish their control of their IP, even if it is a Comic Con. Like, that's why in the pandemic they did DC Fandom because they were like, mm, what can we do here? Like, mm, Disney does their things, like, Star Wars does their things, and there's all these different, like, kind of cons for specific things. They did DC Fandom, then Discovery came in. They were like, we don't need DC Fandom. And we're like, you need DC fandom. Like, it's a great event. Like, we're not going to Comic-Con. So where are we going to get all of this? Where are we going to get all this? Seriously, that is the main question. And I think they need to rectify that. They need a proper way where fans are going to know, okay, we go to this event, we're going to get stuff. Like, we're going to get exciting stuff. Like, you know, a Superman trailer. We're going to get Superman Lois panel for the last time. I don't even think Superman Lois ever had a panel at Comic-Con because 2019, like, when did Superman Lois first come out? I don't know. It was, like, 2020, 2021, something like that. Could be wrong. I mean, it's going to be on its fourth year later this year, so uh, just backtrack on that, I guess. But, like, I went to San Diego Comic-Con 2019. That was the last big Comic-Con, really, before all the lockdowns and i remember you know that was the final aravis year like i got to see the batwoman pilot it was great and i got to see the final arrow panel that was awesome it was the crisis year you know just leading up to that so you also had legends you had you know the new show batwoman you had supergirl you had the flash like it was amazing um but we haven't had that in ages um so yeah I'm definitely missing that sort of stuff. The press rooms for those panels were great too. Yeah, I was there. Um, that's actually the one time I met Andy in real life in 2019. We were interviewing the Supergirl cast. So I presume you were in the room, Craig, but yeah, that was a while ago. 
Um, so yeah, I, I got to talk to Melissa, I got to talk to David Howard and, uh, I had to actually, I was going to do, um, yeah, we have been in the same room, Craig. Um, if you did the Supergirl interviews, yeah, that's awesome. That is great. <laughs> that's kind of weird to think, right? It's like you're in the same room with someone, but then you don't know until later or well, many years later now, like approaching four and a half years, maybe, or, you know, closer to five years. Um, so yeah, I had to actually miss uh, interviewing Grant, which is like one of my big regrets. Um, yeah, and in a different country, not even in the same country. Um, that's my one big regret, but I kind of sacrificed interviewing the flash cast just to go to the panel because then I could see the whole cast. And you know how these, these uh, Comic-Con kind of um, events work, like you leave your seat, you can't get back in um so yeah it was just annoying and i just had to sacrifice it to go to the panels to you know listen to the flash panel it took me 20 years to interview tom welling for more than just one question oh that's crazy but it happened no that's great craig um would you go to an in-person dc fandom would you go as discussing film journalists or go as your own well if it's dc fandom I would go just as you know me just as my my channel um but obviously all lover events i normally go as discussing film um yeah i will get that grant into you one day yeah that would be great or even just to talk to him um it would be awesome i'm just happy i got melissa i got you know kyla all the supergirl cast because back then obviously i really loved supergirl and I was just happy to at least get one of the shows because The Flash and Supergirl are my favorite DC shows of all time. So, yeah, that was just good enough for me. Um, but, yeah, just quickly in regards to Superman Lois, did you guys see that Bitsy broke her toe? And uh, she is going to be in a boot, or she is in a boot right now. Uh, I can heavily relate to that. Uh, I got injured back in November playing football, and... I had to wear a boot for a while. It's not good. And it's a struggle to walk, even if you just break a toe. Like, um, so <laughs> how are they going to find like an in story excuse or why, why Lois might be walking around in a boot? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if she did it like shooting, like filming um, or how she did it, but fair enough. It just, you know, stuff happens, but it'll be interesting to see if they write it into um into the final episode because i believe they're probably about to start the, the the filming uh filming the finale i hope they write it in like she kicked lex really hard yeah like find a fun way to actually explain it like yeah oh i kicked lex so hard like i broke my toes you know <laughs> it would be it would be funny but yeah uh totally would go to in-person dc fandom yeah that's for sure um, I had a boot from a broken toe when I was 11 or 12, so I couldn't identify. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. I mean, I got really bad um, injury record this last year. I play football a lot. Actually, I was playing early today, but can't properly run yet. So I was just in goal. Um, but I sprained my ankle, both ankles, twice this year. One, one on each ankle and... Oh, they were so bad, like so hard to walk at first, really hard to run. I did it in November. I can barely run. Well, I'm just getting back to it now. So uh, when I, when will I be in Declan's live? Um, whenever Deck asks me, I'm, I'm happy to go. So, yeah, whenever. Call me Declan. Um, but, yeah, everyone should be back in next week's live stream. Um, um, hopefully we can get Andy on. Andy is in the middle of, you know, covering CinemaCon right now for Screen Run. And so he's busy writing and he's busy. Um, I think he did some interviews today. He said um, Chainsaw was not around. And yeah, I mean, if there's any other creators you guys want to see on board, like Craig, it would be great if you ever want to come on. I mean, I don't know if you do lots of um, podcasts or anything, but be nice to have you on maybe on a stream with andy if you if you're ever down for it and we can talk obviously 
you know, Krypton site. We can talk about what you've um, done there. Obviously, you've got a lot of websites and you've been around for a while. Talk about some old stories, you know, Smallville, you know, Arrowverse and everything. So it would be good to do that with Andy. So, yeah, we'd love to have you on. And you can talk about Cecile, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, still still not forgiving you for that article. Because for a second, until I saw that the CW was in the title, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I did my own video. I did, like, Flash sequel with, like, Bart and Nora or something. So that was funny. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> James Gunn wants to make us a Seal movie. Imagine. Imagine they do another Flash film and they they get to Seal. Like even if they recast her, like people are gonna be freaking out. It's a Seal Horton in the new Flash movie. Insane guys. Insane. Um, but yeah, that pretty much does it for this live stream. Probably gonna end it here. Really appreciate you who have been watching the live stream, especially you, Craig, Man on the Moon, and some of the other people who have been here, Fabian, Matthew. Thanks for sending in questions and, yeah, um, just chatting. Yeah, Man on the Moon, what do you think about um, TikTok content to do with, like, DC and random stuff? Like, do you think it would pop off there? Like, I'm very interested in TikTok. I've, you know, posted on other accounts before, but um i mean what's a way do you th what's a way to make it work for like what what i do obviously i can do different content there um yeah it's kind of hard to understand tiktok in a way it's like i understand youtube i understand social media um yeah i think hopefully i mean if i went into tiktok like yeah maybe i could make it work and i think you need to get about um 10,000 followers so if you guys I mean do I have a TikTok let me get my phone where's my phone like I will see if I <laughs> I think I feel like I claimed an, an account for the DC TV show a while ago um so let me check if I have an account because if I have an account I'll link you guys so follow me because we need 10,000 followers on there which I feel like we can do. I feel like out of the hundred plus thousand um, people that we got on YouTube, um, you can definitely, yeah, type in the DC TV show. Look, I have a TikTok, the DC TV show. Um, I actually posted like a, a, a bunch of random um, TikToks a while ago. Um, they actually got like thousand views and stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you have any good suggestions, Man on the Moon, um, let me know. Of course, give me a message. Like, what type of content will work there? Um, because I would definitely be interested. Obviously, we need to get those followers up. So go follow me at the DC TV show. I don't know if I can link you online on my computer to there. But, yeah, if you guys are interested, of course, I will do some over there because I feel like, it is a good platform and it's a platform that is up and coming. So why not go, you know, do that? I know all of us have TikTok, like even me, like I don't know too much about it, but um, I would like to know more and I would like to definitely try and blow up over there because, you know, YouTube is, is tough and that's a fact. Like it's just super hard to get consistent. Um, shout out to Gary. <laughs> Thank you for sending in the super chat. Really appreciate it. Nice to see you at the end of the live stream, Gary. Send in any final Super Chats as we head towards the end of the stream. And the answer is probably, Gary, probably. I'm sorry that Andy's not here to give you a good answer. <laughs> but, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'll do it. Like, before we end this stream, any thoughts? Like, what, what do you think would work from my DC or, you know, content like that? Like, I mean, it could be like Avatar, like I, I'm interested in all kinds of stuff. Like, I don't think it needs to be strictly DC because it's not my YouTube channel. It's it's the TikTok. It's something a bit different. So, yeah, I can definitely branch out a bit. Um, but, yeah, go follow. It's um, at the DC TV show. I see some of you guys have followed. 
and you could even just like say your thoughts and stuff and that's really fast like 30 seconds and see a trend yeah it's true it's like people talk for like 15 seconds people talk for 30 seconds and they say this is the breaking news the joker 2 trailer came out or this is the breaking news first look at the superman logo and i'm sure you know some of that blows up so yeah i guess i just got you know set my mind to it i guess uh i don't think it's hard like you literally record yourself probably do like a little bit of editing and then you just post it and maybe you can even like back up and have like a good amount of um videos ready yeah <laughs> i think the ones i posted so far are quite funny they're just like random ones like just you know a lot of shows to drop in june cover the boys just quick small reviews yeah, quick small reviews, I guess, would work. Like, literally 30 seconds. Like, okay, this is what I thought of this. Blah, 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 blah. Done. That's it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we'll see. We'll see, guys. I, I, I definitely will. So, go follow at the DC TV show, and I'll um, include it in some videos. So, hopefully, more of you guys actually go ahead and uh, follow there. Um, do small reviews like Civil War. Yeah, could do that. Um, I guess it doesn't have to be just DC related. Um, so, all right. I think that does it. Keep an eye on our TikTok then. <laughs> Thanks for the motivation. Maybe I'll be posting very, very soon. But for now, thank you all for watching. Thanks for all the suggestions, guys. Appreciate Craig. Appreciate you, Man on the Moon. And uh, yeah, everyone else have a good day. And shout out to Gary for the super chat. Really appreciate it, Gary. But for now, catch you guys later, and I will see you tomorrow for a new video. Please watch the videos. There is quite a lot up on the channel right now, so go check them out.